Hi and welcome back to the Canine P4 Training Portal. Today we're going to be looking at how to pipette. Pipetting may seem simple, and it is, however it is one of the most commonly missed steps of the entire testing procedure. If it is done incorrectly, your results will also be incorrect. So the demonstration we'll perform for you today in this video is going to show how to properly use the pipette and some of the features that go along with it. Master these simple steps and you will be well on your way to accurate and profitable testing. So first, let's get to know the parts of our pipetter. There are many variations of pipetters out there. However, most, if not all of them, will have the same corresponding parts. So first, we have the plunger button on top. Your thumb will rest on top here, and this is responsible for aspirating and dispensing the fluid removed. Next, we have the tip eject button. This is going to remove the tip from the end of your pipetter automatically, like so. To demonstrate, I'll place a tip on, and then we'll, we will use the tip ejector button to remove it. It's going to be probably best to have this dispensed over a trash can to limit exposure to serums and potentially biologically hazardous materials. Next we have the tip collar, which of course, as I demonstrated in the step before, is where the pipetter tip is going to go on. Then we will have some sort of volume indicator window. This number is going to correspond to the amount in microliters or milliliters, depending on the model and volume draw of your pipette, and show you what it is set to. And last but not least, we have a volume adjustment knob. Most pipetters come in an adjustable range and can adjust the volume by turning the knob clockwise and counterclockwise. You will see the corresponding number in the window change. Set it to the required volume for your test. So with most, if not all, pipetters, you're going to read the volume from top to bottom. With some, you may also read the, the volume from left to right. So in this instance, this is a 20 to 200 microliter pipette. We have a 075. That's going to correspond to 75 microliters. Let's change it to 100. You'll see that top number change, indicating we are at the 100 microliter mark. So when using the pipette, there are only two basic uses. The first is for drawing up liquid, and the other is for dispensing it. Let's look at how to draw up liquid first. Now you'll feel a resistance point as you slowly go down to the first stop. So the first step is to place firmly the tip on the pipette. Avoid using your hands to minimize contamination when doing this. Okay, so first we're going to draw up the liquid. We're going to depress our plunger to the first stop or first position on the plunge. Next, we will insert that into the liquid about halfway or the upper portion and release the plunger. Release the plunger slowly to avoid pulling in any air. Next, we will go to dispensing the liquid into the test, tube, or final location. So to do this, we'll go down first to the first stop and then to the bottom position, which is also referred to as the blowout position to remove any remaining liquid. So let's give you a run through of what happens when we aspirate from the wrong position, which would be the bottom. Again, we need to aspirate or draw up the liquid from the first point of resistance, also known as the first stop. Not drawing the liquid up from the first stop will result in invalid results. Be sure to master this step so that you can trust your results. So first we'll apply a new pipette tip making sure it is firmly placed by placing some pressure but not too much on the rack. 
And for the first demonstration, we'll show you what 75 microliters using the correct method shows in the tip. So be careful when inserting your pipette tip to not exceed the top as this may ruin or damage your pipetter. So from the first position, we get this volume. It's about halfway in between the second and third notch on my graduated pipetter tips. Not all tips will be graduated in this manner. Next we will remove that tip, put a new clean tip on. Anytime you draw up and dispense liquid, always place a new clean tip on your pipetter. And this time we're going to go down to the bottom or second position with incorrect use and show you the difference what happens with the amount of liquid drawn up. So as you can see here, the volume has increased pretty significantly. Even as little as a 5 or 10% volume increase versus what you need for the test will result in invalid results and dramatically affect your result. So let's demonstrate some of the most common mistakes when using the pipetter. The first issue is going to be having a loose tip on the collar of your pipetter. This can impact the amount of volume drawn. So we're going to place your tip on loosely. And as you can see there, that one easily fell off. But having an air seepage through the top here, which should be a firm seal, can also result in the incorrect volume and invalidate your test results. The tip should not fall off without using the tip eject button. So the next common mistake is air bubbles in your sample or within your pipette tip. This can also impact your volume and make your result less accurate or invalid. So the most common ways that air bubbles get in the pipette tip is by inserting the pipette into the liquid and then pushing down. Not always will that happen, but often that will introduce air bubbles. The other way that can happen is if you're in, if you're not far enough into your sample tube and you end up pulling air as well as serum, you will get a result like this. This will also lead to inaccurate results. And the final way that this can happen is simply by moving the plunger too fast. So let's demonstrate that. We're going to do it incorrectly by put, depressing the plunger when we are in the liquid. As a reminder, you won't want to do that before when using it correctly. So here we have much too much volume. We didn't get any air bubbles that time, but we can easily do so using it that way. The last and other common mistake is to touch the tip with your bare hands or leave it laying on a dirty surface. This can contaminate the plastic of the tip and can also affect your results. We want to keep the tip as clean as possible. Use racked pipette tips and gloves at every given opportunity. So let's demonstrate this using the full set of, set of techniques and order of operations for your pipe editor. The first step is to ensure in your volume indicator window that is set for the correct volume for the test. We require 75 microliters for this test and it is set to 075 reading from top down, therefore the volume is set correctly. The second step is to place the new unused tip firmly on the device using a small amount of pressure when pushing down and avoiding using bare hands. The third step is going to be to push down the plunger to the first stop prior to submerging it in your liquid or serum. The fourth step then will be to move that into the middle or upper top region of your liquid and slowly release up. The fifth step, depending on your test and analyzer, will be either to add the serum to a buffer tube for mixing or deposit straight onto the test cartridge. 
In this instance, we're going to show you mixing with a buffer tube. So here we're going to use the second stop or bottom position. We go down to the first and then to the bottom, lift up and release. And then repeat as necessary. Well, there you have it. With these steps in place, you're already a Pipette Pro. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you again soon and happy testing.